Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, another Inside the Birds as we uh, start to round out the, the short month of February here. This is the last full week of February, which means March is right around the corner, which means free agency is around the corner. Of course, a trip to the Combine for Adam and I is even closer. And so we're going to start to get into free agency a little bit deeper uh, on our next few podcasts as we get closer to the new league year. Uh, today, I think we're going to, in this pod, we'll, we'll generally go through the Eagles free agents. They have many. I, I can't remember the last time the Eagles had this many guys um, whose contracts expire at the end of the year as the Eagles have this year, uh, over about a dozen. So we'll go through them on offense and defense, try to figure out what we think will happen and, and uh, give some analysis on that. And we've got some interesting stuff this week on the ITB platform. If you have not yet been catching the Trey Thomas tape breakdown, it's called uh, On the Tape with Trey, or Trey on the Tape, Trey on the Tape. They've been fantastic. Uh, the first one was about protection schemes, and Trey really broke down some of the interesting um, parts of the Eagles' protection, offensive line protection schemes that work well, but also were exploited against Tampa in the playoff game. And then the one last week, Adam, I thought was really fascinating. It was on – the evolution of the Eagles run game um, from a, from a zone standpoint, he really spent a lot of time on the inside zone, which was the bread and butter play for the Eagles uh, running play for the Eagles last year. And all the elements involved, both the running backs, the quarterback, especially on the design runs for the quarterback um, and the interior and exterior offensive linemen all working in unison. And it was really good. Uh, I hope you, I'm sure you had a chance to catch it, but mm -hmm. um We'll get into it today because the Eagles have a lot of free agents at the running back position. But as far as having a potent running game and what makes what made it work so well, I think Trey did a fantastic job of laying it out. Yeah, the inside outside zone run game. Yeah, the the you know, every team runs zone. Uh, even if they do gap scheme, they're going to do they're still going to do zone, and it's just how you do it and not every not every inside zone and outside zone is blocked the same way and we trey has told us since we since he started working with us last year uh about the hand usage and how stoutland the offensive line coach teaches it differently because the hands are lower mm -hmm. and talks about the catch technique and so forth so and he moves it up to um how, how they're coached now and responsibility and as you said how it works so well and the great thing also is that it's not like this is an hour. They're not going to take more. None of these. These are generally 15 to 20 minutes mm -hmm. and it's gets you in and out. And it's only only right now on uh, YouTube because it's all visual and you, 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 you can't you wouldn't get much out of it if it's on the pod version because it's all you have to see it. And that's the right. key. Right. Absolutely. And because Trey not only shows you the all 22, but he does the grease uh, board drawings and he shows you the X's and O's that he draws up himself and he does an excellent job with it. So this week. Um, you know, we, we brainstormed to figure out what, what do people want to know uh, about the Eagles from last year that they can really get a good education on. And together we thought to have Trey switch sides and analyze the defensive line, specifically the pass rush and why virtually the same defensive line from the year before that was among the leaders or may have led the NFL in sacks and Jim Schwartz's last year was among the fewest um, sack producing defensive lines this past season in the first year under Jonathan Gannon. Now we know Brandon Graham was injured for most of the year, but that's not necessarily a reason why they should have gone from one of the best to one of the worst in sacks. So we set out um, to have Trey kind of watch the tape, see if it's an alignment thing, a coaching thing, a player drop off decline thing, everything. So I look forward to Trey's um breakdown coming out it'll be out on tuesday as they've always been out and it's cool that he's kind of switching sides and people forget when trey coached with the eagles he coached defensive line not offensive line mm. right he when he was coaching that one year under chip kelly he worked with connor barwin he mm. worked with um the pass rushers in particular and he really worked with that was the year barwin had his most sacks as a pro i believe mm. and what he did was spend a lot of time working with the pass rushers on moves that would help them counteract some of the best offensive tackles in the league. So he took his knowledge as an OT and helped apply it to the pass rush. So he can do the same in the tape breakdown as well. They, they really could use someone like that because their pass rush is so disappointing. Uh, it was. You know, last season, and it will, that'll play into our, our show today, as the Eagles have 13 free agents, 
and they have you know, playing on defense actually from all three levels: D, D line, uh, linebackers, uh, corners, safeties. Uh, so m- most of their free agents are, are unrestricted. They have, uh, I think, like four restricted overall on both sides of the football. But now we did a show four weeks ago where we broke down the entire team position by position. This one's different in that we're just going to look at the free agents and what we think they should do and what the, we, we believe they will do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, this exercise, as you go through it, you start thinking about it and you go, you know what? Because you, you, you could start seeing where they have some holes. Uh, right. Maybe sometimes they're a little bit bigger than we thought. Yeah, no doubt about it. So look forward to that. That'll be out Tuesday. And on Wednesday, it's going to be the first edition of the Intel with Greg Cosell on the Inside the Birds platform. This will be available first on the podcast only platforms. So you'll have to listen to it there and then eventually they'll come out on YouTube. But the first three weeks of it are going to preview free agency. So on Wednesday, the first one is going to be focused on wide receivers and cornerbacks who um, are free agents that the Eagles and other NFL teams may be coveting. And then the second week will be linebackers and safeties. Third week will be pass rushers. And then the last show will be because that'll be with that'll drop the week of free agency starts. We'll have Greg recapping any moves that are made throughout free agency. So it's going to be exciting first four weeks of a 10 week show. The, the other shows will focus on the draft. Uh, but everybody has asked us for more Greg Cosell. So you've asked, we deliver, and this year it starts sooner. So again, Wednesday, uh, it will drop 6 a.m. on the podcast platforms, in the Intel with Greg Cosell, which I believe is the name you came up with, Adam. I like that. That was great. Yeah, right. Intel, yeah. Greg Cosell. yeah I, I had to come up with something um, uh, w- with that one. But, yeah, oh, by the way, it's receiver and linebacker is the first one. Oh, is it? Okay. I didn't realize yeah. we made a little change there. Okay. That, that'll work. Yeah, no, no. It's the same email we sent a month ago to him. I'm just, I just found it because I couldn't remember. I knew we were doing receivers. I couldn't remember the other position. Yeah, uh, I thought we changed the, the receiver corner, then linebacker safety, but that, that's fine. Whatever. Oh, did you? We'll, we'll okay. Oh, I, I don't even remember. But because I'm just looking at the, the first email we sent him. But here's the thing I, it's going to be fascinating what they do at linebacker. We'll, we'll get started in a minute with offense, but. Because mm-hmm. that is such a position for so many years, they've got to they've got to address. And I'm I'm interested to see now that Gannon is back because we we got this we've gotten a, ca- a couple questions about this. How much now that they, that Roseman and Andy Weidel, the the personnel director, how much information will they take in now? Now that these coaches on both sides of the football, they've installed their schemes. The everybody now has worked with each other. How much more of a say do the coaches have in terms of what the roster breakdown will look like? That, that to me, is really interesting. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And um, I know people want to know, you know, how much influence, as you're mentioning, that Jonathan Gannon will have on the player um, player acquisitions. So, we know, you know, it's interesting. Jim Schwartz had, mm-hmm. had a lot of input from day one. I mean, you know, they went out and got players in his first two years that played for him for the Bills. I mean, from Nigel Bradham to Leotis McKelvin, a lot of people forget about Leotis, right? To then trading for Ronald Darby. So they did bring in players. Didn't they bring in someone from Detroit who had played under J? I don't know if he made the team or uh, did yes. he like? I, I, I have to look. Actually, no, I think he... Stephen Tulloch came before Schwartz, right? That's who I thought it was. It wasn't. Did they bring in Stephen Tullock before they had Schwartz? That's a great question. I, I I know he was here, but I don't in Philly. I just don't remember what year that was. Yeah, I don't either. Teen or fifteen? Uh, that's a great question. And did he ever make it? See, I thought that they were going to sign him, and they wound up not, or something happened where he didn't sign. I remember the the the. I, I remember the chatter that he was. They were looking to bring him in. No, he, he definitely came in. In fact, uh, the question is, did he make it? He was here. I was correct. 16. Yeah, he did. Yeah. In fact, he did. He signed a one-year, $3 million deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, he the next year he retired. He wound up not playing. And he, he knew that, you know, he knew the Schwartz defense. He just was, uh, he played, he didn't, he, he barely played. He, he played in 12 games, but he just was shot, you know, physically. Right. He was done. Yes. Super high character guy, smart guy, played for Schwartz um, in Detroit and was with Tennessee before that. So he was a master of the defense. Like he knew the wide nine and all the responsibilities because uh, he played them for so many years. Right. Right. And of course, even till the end, I mean, a large part of them taking 
Davion Taylor in the third round was because they had taken Jalen Rager and Jalen Hurts in the first and second round and not a Kenneth Murray. Um, and so Schwartz needed a guy. He needed a linebacker, and they came out with Davion Taylor. So uh, we will see how much influence. I don't know that anybody who was picked last year in the draft had like Jonathan Gannon fingerprints on it. I mean, we're talking about Milton Williams and, and Zach yeah. McPherson, really. I don't know yeah. if there was uh, – you know, they needed both. They needed <laughs> linemen. They, they prioritized yeah. defensive linemen. They were probably, they needed a corner, and um, I think that no matter you could have been the defensive coordinator, and I think both of those guys would have still been still been drafted. And guess what? They still need D linemen and, and corners. <laughs> Nothing they has do. changed. You know that that that's the funny thing, and not you know, Mill Williams obviously looks like he's going to be a player. I mean, it was only one year, but for a third round pick, he boy did he look good. Mm-hmm. But as we get through this exercise and, and kind of move this forward, because this will lead us right. This is going to lead us right kind of what their free agent board is going to look like in terms of value. And then what they'll do is, depending on who they get, that will line them up for the draft. Because mm-hmm. obviously the, the draft is first, the free agency is first, the draft is second. And we'll see how aggressive they, they are now that they're going to have a lot more money to spend uh, in terms of free agent dollars. There you go. All right, so let's uh, that that kind of wraps up the ITB news. We have a couple of things we're working on that I think by next podcast, uh, I hope uh, you know our Thursday podcast. Maybe we'll have some more information. I know we're trying to do some other shows and things like that. And um, oh, yeah, we're also yeah. working on something with Andrew Decheco where he's gonna he's doing a, a kind of a dra- we're gonna call it uh, I think Draft Dreams, a show where he interviews small school prospects for uh, getting ready for the NFL draft. It's gonna be an awesome. It's an awesome idea. And I think people are going to really like it. We get you get saturated with draft coverage, and you you get to hear about all the same guys, right? The Aiden Hutchinsons and the, the Malik Willis's and Kenny Pickett's, but very rarely do you hear about you know the, the uh, Milton Williams, for example, from Louisiana Tech. I don't know how many people really had him on the Eagles radar no going into the draft, and look <laughs> at the year that he had. Nobody exactly. So yeah. Andrew's great at great. identifying who some of the great small school school prospects are that we should pay attention to. Hey, Cooper Cup. Okay, Cooper Cup. Perfect example. Yep. Now, I know he was a third-round pick, but if you talk about small schools, I mean, how many players from Eastern Washington have ever made it? Very few. Very few. Very few. That's correct. So that's going to be a really nice series, and we'll let you know more about that as it develops uh, in a week or so. Uh, Let's get into the podcast first. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA is too good to pass up. You just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ITB. Bet just $1 on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if that team wins. Promo code ITB at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Got to be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only, minimum $5 restrictions apply. In partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino, see DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Let us discuss the offense. So the Eagles have a lot of guys who, um, you know, their roles uh, almost kind of unknown, right, going into this year, whether they come back or not. So let's start with the running backs because this is obviously the big – what we talked about, big part of their game. Jordan Howard is an unrestricted free agent, and Boston Scott is a restricted free agent. I I – Jordan Howard, Adam – he never seems to get interest f- around the league from anybody except the Eagles. So, <laughs> That's a good point. so I, I can't imagine even even though he played performed well in the yeah. in the, the game in the scheme last year, he still got hurt, which has always yeah. been kind of a thing with him yeah. for the last few years. Yeah. And um, I I don't think he's going anywhere. Like you could probably even you don't have to even re-sign him now. You can probably wait on it a little bit, and as you sure. figure out what you're doing with your running game. Amazingly, he's only 27. He just turned 27 last that November. That is amazing. It feels like he's been in the league for 15 years. I, I, to the point where you think he'd be like 29 or 30, but he's only 27. Uh, this will be his, let's see, seventh year. He, he was drafted by the Bears in the, uh, in the 2016 draft. Mm-hmm. Um, it, boy, did he revive his career. Because I remember when you know we had heard, and I, I, I think we must have went to OTAs or something. So we heard he, he got in much better shape. I know he was very upfront about how he knew his, his career was on the crosshairs. And it, he clearly earned a spot in training camp. I know that they went up cutting him uh, to keep Boston Scott over him. And Scott had a very good offseason. And then he spent a majority of the, the season on the practice squad. And then they brought him up. I mean, he ran for 4.7 yards per carry. Mm-hmm. Did a great job. I mean, he boy, that, that rotation that they had, he did an excellent job. But as you said, once again, he got hurt. 
um, with a couple different minor injuries. But the fact of the matter is, uh, he showed he can play. He he definitely revived his career and showed he can play in this league. But as you said, they could just let him. They don't need to do anything. And he's he's a guy who won't count against the cap anyway because he'll be he he won't be one of the top fifty three most likely. It would be a veteran minimum deal. Um, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. And that's mm-hmm. you're right. I I I don't think they have to worry about that. To me, he's like he's a down the line guy. That's a that's a term that uh, teams use. You don't have to worry about him. Right. And the question with Boston Scott is, do they tender him or not? It will be either the low tender, or or they don't tender him at all. Uh, to me, if you don't tender him and you wait on Howard, then you've got Jason Huntley who's on a contract who did, has not done anything. Although he did he did get brought up uh, for the. Was it the Dallas game? The Dallas game? Was it the Dallas game? I know he played. It was. Yeah. Yes, it was the Dallas game. He had a little, sure, you know, look, he's a changeup. He's got some juice, but he doesn't yeah. really have much value because he has no team's value. Right. He he he's a guy that you you may or may not use on teams as a returner. Uh, to right. me, he's another guy that doesn't factor in. It right now it's Miles Sanders who's on the final year of his rookie deal and game mm-hmm. well and everyone else. You have to see. So here's the question spinning it forward. Just talked about Howard's and Scott's for agent status. Just a guess right now. I would think they would tender Scott. There's no guaranteed money with restricted free agent tenders. You're mm-hmm. going to cut him at the end of uh, you know, his salary, most likely, as even a low tender, probably would count as a, under the 53. But nevertheless, you could just cut him if you don't want him. It won't cost right. you anything right. uh, you know, if he doesn't make it. But now here's a question for you. Would you draft a running back at this point? Yes, I would draft the running back, uh, especially knowing this is going into the final year of Miles Sanders' deal. Um, I'll listen if someone wants to call me about Miles Sanders. I don't know that anybody is, and if they do, I don't know that they're going to give up anything for um, a good running back who's you know battled some injuries, who has one year left on his deal. Uh, so it's not like you get great kind of control with it. You get one year of Miles Sanders. So. I've just talked myself into reason rationalizing why there probably won't be any great deals. And there's no reason to then trade Miles Sanders if someone even calls you up, unless that you just get blown away with an offer. Um, I, I can't think of one single good reason not to for everything you just said before, but I've been thinking about it for a while now, not to tender Boston Scott. Like you said, if you wind up upgrading to the point where he's not going to make the team. You can cut him without any any major uh, dead cap, and it's not guaranteed. None. But None. None. he has already proven to be a very good backup who can step in, um, run your offense. He catches the ball. He doesn't do anything great. He does everything well, and he stays healthy, unlike uh, some of the other guys that the Eagles have had. So I can't think, think of a – especially if, you, if you're going to make Jordan Howard a kind of a down-the-line guy and you want to have somebody under contract other than – Miles Sanders, and you know you have to make the decision on the RFA tender within the next few weeks. There, G- give me one good reason why you wouldn't do it. No, I would tender him for sure, and because sure. so, if let, let's say the Eagles would wind up entertaining uh, a trade offer or two from the, for Sanders, I'm not saying they're going to, but right. nothing would surprise me for the guy on the end of his rookie deal. We're not expecting him to have his contract extended because of his injury history. It just would not. It just would go against. Uh, the way that the Eagles think about extending players, they, the other than that that uh, Jeffrey restructure, which was such a mistake, they mm-hmm. don't they typically don't extend guys who can't stay healthy. Um, and we'll get to Derek Barnett. That one's going to be fascinating because they're very light at defensive end. But uh, I, I just Sanders is clearly talented, but he just has trouble staying on the field. There you go. All right, moving on to pass catchers. <laughs> the Eagles are so young at wide receiver and tight end that (laughs) their, their free agents are veterans who aren't even 30 yet. Right. Greg Ward at wide receiver is a restricted free agent. And again, you, I can't think of any conceivable reason given the low cost for the, the, the tender, the lowest tender, why you wouldn't just tender Greg Ward. I mean, he's safe, reliable on the punt return. If you need it. Um, He came on at the end of last year when, when somebody needed to kind of, play some important reps. He caught some a uh, couple of touchdowns and made some important plays for the team in the last few few games of the year. Uh, if you have injuries at the position, you're going to have to play him, even if you do upgrade. I mean, the Eagles could bring in, um, we, we'll talk about it, free wide receiver, but they're not going to have like 
five or six guys that are better than Greg Ward. So why wouldn't you? Well, they just don't have a role for him. They just, I understand like, you know, he had to play at some point, but he, he was basically a non-factor with his coaching staff. They didn't, they just didn't see any need for him. I mean, even when Rager was struggling and they were not getting a lot of production other from other than from Devontae Smith and obviously Quez Watkins came on, they needed another guy to come on. They just wouldn't play him at, at mm-hmm. the receiver position. I, I, for whatever reason, they don't, because I know that Sirianni talks about inside receivers and outside receivers. They don't talk about X and Z and, and Y, right? which is fine. But the fact of the matter is Greg Ward has shown in the past that guy could help the football team. I get he's not fast, mm-hmm. but he's a reliable pass catcher. And you saw a couple of those red zone throws uh, in the second half of the season. Guy's a player. I know he had a couple drops, too, <laughs> for the little he played. Mm-hmm. Receiver. But uh, I, I don't know why they don't like him. I just don't know why they would never use him because, boy, he showed at times he could be a pretty effective possession receiver. But right. and you know what? When, you, when you're struggling to find receivers who actually catch the football and get open, I don't know why the staff just didn't like him, but it is what it is. Well, so let's think. Can you get, by the end of the offseason, six wide receivers who are better than Ward to get him to, to not have him on the team? You've got Devontae Smith. You have Quez Watkins. You have Jalen Rager. That's three right there. You might sign one in free agency. That's four. You might draft one. Oh, they're signing one. They have. Yeah, they're going to sign one. They'll pro- they, they could even draft one. They have enough picks. So that's five sure. right there. Sure. Right. So he's your sixth receiver unless like Deion Kane or somebody can beat him out. And the point I is, know. you can't you can't make that decision then. You have to make it now because he's a free agent. So you might as well give him the one year tender. And if you you wind up getting six receivers that are better than him, all right, it doesn't cost you anything if you have to release him. But the odds that you're going to be that – because he does give you teams value, special teams value. So the odds that he's not going to be on the team, I think, are lower than than him being on the team. So you might yeah. as well tender him. Yeah, I I'm, I would be against it. I will check into this. We'll, we'll know at the combine what they're doing. You know, mm-hmm. geez, God, wow, we're there – they're – we geez, a week from today, uh, we we from tomorrow, I'll be there. So yeah, uh, yeah, wow, and you're you'll be there already. So yeah, wow, this this thing's yep. coming right up on us. Uh, yeah, I I would be surprised if they did, to be honest with you, because he just they don't this staff doesn't seem to value him, and he's not a good punt returner. But how, how are you? I just I guess how do you fill the, the the spot right now? You have one, you have you have you have Devante. Right. Okay. You've got Quez Watkins that they like, uh, they want to keep building with. And of course, oh, they yeah. want to keep building with Rager. I mean, maybe something happens. I doubt it. But so that's three right there. How, how are you going to get three other wide receivers that you Easy. know are going to be better? Easy. You're going to sign one, at least one in free agency, a veteran. Right. That's one. You're going to draft one or two. And there you go. That's. But you don't know that the two that you draft are going to be able to beat him out. And you have to sign, you have to make that decision on his free agent tag in the next week or two, right? Yeah, or I hear you. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. It's. Um... If it, Doug Peterson still had been the head coach, we wouldn't be talking about this because he'd be back. I, I just, I, I'm looking at that he, he, only thing he can do on punt returns is catch it. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> drop it, but he's, he, they call his, his nickname is Greg Safe Ward because he just catches it and doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Fair catch. Yeah. Um, so we know Mahe he, like. What's that? Like Reno, Reno that? Mahe, like yes. To me, I think it have more value to another team that understands what he brings to the table. I'm, I'm a fan of, of Greg Ward. Just. Um, and remember the former staff for a while didn't want him on the active rest. Something was going on. There was a, there was a, there was a dif- difference of opinion between the sta- coach staff and the front office staff. Someone didn't want him on the roster. Um, and then they finally brought him up and you saw how much he contributed. So right. to me, he's got better value elsewhere. All right. I will, I will concede one thing. I mean, it's, it's, I'll concede this. If Greg Ward, which, is your fifth or six, fifth or sixth receiver, which he has to be. The one year, even one year. What what's the the lowest free agent tender? It's like a yeah. million and a half, right? It's I, it's yeah. I I have the tenders. I haven't seen the tenders yet, but it's, it's going to be over a million and a half. I think again, there's no guaranteed money. The the it's just it's not a big deal. I just uh, to me, if a guy's not going to contribute, it's like John Hightower, right? John Hightower mm-hmm. contributed surprisingly. He signed real late for the reserve future contracts. Uh, he signed like a week after everyone else signed back. The guy that there's obviously a miss. The, the, the coaches don't trust the guy because they brought up Keyshawn Johnson, who was not even resigned. I know. Johnson, I know. The Niners. So I, I don't understand the plan of receiver here. This is 
Um, not a lot of certainty here. I get what you're saying. I, I, I understand that. But to move this along here, Greg Ward, to me, has more value somewhere else because these coaches don't seem to have an idea of how they want to use them. Okay. All right. I did not think we were going to be sort of on opposite ends of this one. We are. All right. I understand. Greg Ward. Greg Ward. All right. <laughs> You know, it's, I was going to say, you know, it's like the end of February and a kind of a lackluster Eagles offseason when we're sitting here debating whether or not Greg Ward's going to sign a restricted free right. agent tender. But <laughs> I know, but my point is this, right? You know what's odd also? They have more restricted free agents than they have unrestricted on offense. That is strange, odd. yeah. Um, I'm just about maximizing the potential of the roster. If a guy's not going to contribute, why is he on the football team? Personal people say thumbs up or thumbs down. It's a thumbs down to me. Mm -hmm. Guy's got he could help himself elsewhere with another football team. I, I would, it, it would it would be a minor surprise if he's back because again I'm just basic on the fact that the lack of use. Okay, all right. Uh, Jason Kroom, tight end, unrestricted free agent. I think he falls under the category of down the line type guy. There's no urgency to bring There's back no Jason Kroom. He has no value because he tours ACL, and they they remember they they surprisingly resigned Richard Rodgers already. Right. They've got. Goddard, Stahl, Rogers, and Togi. Uh, they they they'll they'll probably add one more. It wouldn't shock me if they drafted one as high as a third round. Right. I mean, they do have Tyree Jackson still. He's got to come back from well, the the knee, but yeah. ACL, yeah. Um, and he unfortunately, yeah, he's a major long shot coming back from that injury, and he needed to fill his body out. Again, yeah. I, I I still think they'll they'll wind up adding one more, just because you don't you've got undrafted free agent in, in Stahl and Togi. Rogers is a journeyman. Tyree Jackson's an undrafted free agent and uh, come off a major knee injury. Kroom is unsigned. I can't imagine he'd be back. Um, so they need to, they probably will. I, I think they'll want to, my opinion would be, I think they'll want to drafting somebody as high as a third round. Yeah. Who could potentially be an upgrade over Stahl. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a very strong tight end draft. Yeah. Who was the guy at the senior bowl who was, uh, who was like an athletic wonder kid? Uh, Durchik? Does that name sound right? Um, they had the five out of the six are were really good that week. Of, of the yeah, there was that. there was one guy in particular. Oh, man, why well, can't I think his name was really good? They, they had a lot of good tight ends. Who had to go. Yeah, they really did. And then that was one guy who stood out because he was very very athletic and he had great size too. So uh, if I can remember his name. Don't uh, worry about it. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get to them. Um, well, actually, we'll probably talk about when we're at the combine. Dolchik, Greg Dolchik. That's mm -hmm. Dolchik or Dol. D U L C I C H. That that was the name to to look out for. So, all right. Um, so here's an interesting one. Let's let's finish off the offense here. Nate Herbig is a restricted free agent. He probably there. How many tiers of the are there of rest, uh, of tenders? Are there two or three? Um, there's first, second round, original round, and um, uh, and low tender. And he he uh, he was not drafted. He, He's been such a good story. Now he's mm -hmm. Eagle see him more as a guard who could play center feed him too, but he's he's probably better off a guard. And plus, there if Kelsey comes back, he they certainly won't be playing center at all. Right. Because not only because of Kelsey would be coming back, uh, because they've got Dickerson as their future at center potentially. Or mm -hmm. I'll say Malo, who you and I have talked about a bit after the season ended, about how you know it's does he stay or go? You know, mm -hmm. he's kind of a luxury at this point. We'll have to see because they're so deep. Um, Herbie will get tendered. It's just a matter of um, at what level. Uh, I would think low tender just because the question is, this is an undrafted guy who certainly has been a good story, but we we know about his weight, which has been a major problem. It was much better last season, did a good job of losing weight, but he's not an athlete. He's a grinder. You kind of know who he is. Mm -hmm. He's a guy to me, he's got a way more value to the Eagles than he would to another team, but we, we shall see. No, is there any reason to maybe slap the uh, the mid mid level uh, tender there on him and see if someone will give you? They have to give you the pick, right? Like they have to give up a a pick to it's, get him from you. You know, it'd be first. You no, know, it's, it's first, second, and low tender because he wasn't drafted. Yeah, no one's going to give up a second. I don't think no, for Nate Hurd. So no, yeah, so you just slap the the one year low tender. Yeah, on him. yeah. Now I'll check. I don't. I doubt the rules are going to change. It's just so rare. There's so many. There's so few restricted free agents anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the only drafted ones that that are are the ones that get cut, and they wind up, you know, they they go through a series of of uh, one or two year deals, then become restricted and unrestricted. We we don't right. talk about exclusive rights because they have no they they can't go anywhere. 
They only right. become a free agent if the club doesn't tender them. So it's a, it's meaningless to talk about them. There you go. All right, that rounds out the offense right there. Um, we'll get into defense in a second. First, we want to tell you about our friends at PHLSportsNation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fans, by the fans. That's their motto. So make sure you check them out at PHLSportsNation.com and on Twitter at PHLSportsNation. We'll pause real quick for a word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you pop into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You'll get a great deal. All right, defense. This is uh, there's an interesting bunch of names here of defensive free agents um, from the in-house department. Let's start on the defensive line. Uh, I think this is a, a pretty clear cut and obvious stuff there with Hassan Ridgeway, defensive tackle, who's an unrestricted free agent, and Ryan Kerrigan, uh, defensive end, unrestricted free agent. Ryan Kerrigan did not follow in the footsteps of the um, veteran pass rushers that the Eagles have kind of been bringing in lately from, uh, you know, Chris Long to Michael Bennett to uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a name here and there. It just it didn't really work out very well. Um, and, I, you know, maybe that's we'll, we'll see the trade tape. Maybe there's some alignment thing going on. He certainly was playing a position that he wasn't accustomed to playing i remember adam we were we talked about how he was going to stand up and he was yeah. going to be a stand-up rusher and we we just didn't see a whole lot of that he did just some but it wasn't it. yeah you're right was it anything like we expected I, I don't understand that he stood up almost his entire career and and you didn't not that he dropped much but they they play him as an on the ball uh d lineman Mm-hmm. Just the way they use him, the alignment was different than he was with Washington. I, I just didn't understand it. Didn't work. He, I know he did well in the Tampa Bay game, the playoff game, but some of that was attributed to Brady holding the ball because you know, a couple times when um, he just got stuck in the pocket because a couple, the, a couple guys didn't get open. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't see it. Um, Ridgeway, I, Ridgeway's a down the line guy. If you want to, you can wait as long as you want. Um, I was disappointed in Hassan Ridgeway's season. I felt okay. that he was especially um, subpar in run defense, which surprised me. Um, you know, sometimes it's just getting off that block and, and he just, he would not, he got pushed back way more than I'd ever seen him get pushed back. And and again, different, different scheme. So that the whole adaptation to it might've been difficult for him, but he was decent in Jim Schwartz's system, getting up field, getting to the quarterback. Um but and even I thought playing the run in Jim Schwartz's system, he was good. But he was asked to do it differently, and he didn't didn't do a great job of it. So uh, he's a down the line guy. You can bring yep. him back, but you know you don't have to. Yeah, you can wait till August if you want. I mean, if you yeah. and if someone signs him before then, oh well. Uh, right. You know, he, he played three years on and off with the Eagles uh, from that trade in um, 2019. Mm-hmm. I, I, it just makes me wonder, dude. Gannon run the scheme like he wanted to, or did he just not have the talent to work with it? I'm so curious to see what kind of changes there will be. There mm-hmm. will be on, on, on his defense in terms of schematics. There's, I mean, I don't know if it'd be 50% change, 10% change, but if they get more talent, he'll be able to do more. Now, as we, before we get the linebacker, so l- let's say for, I'm not expecting Carrigan or Ridgeway to be back. Mm-hmm. You also have Derek Barnett, who's up. That one's going to be interesting because they're so light at the end. They have no depth, zero depth. Yeah. Teron Jackson's more of a fourth end. Malvo had some good snaps you know, late in the I season. I like him. Yeah, he's long. He's a developmental guy. But, again, he's a fourth or fifth end. Matt Leo has never played for them. He's back once again. How many uh, How many years do you get the international exemption guy for? Like, is he going to be like a 10-year eagle who never plays? <laughs> no, you know, that's a good question. I have no idea. But this will be his third year with them. Uh he, he's just under six foot seven, man. He's, he's he's long, but right now they have one guy. They they have two guys they know will be on the roster for sure. Josh Sweat and Teron Jackson will be on the roster. Malvo's got to show he can make it. Boy, they got a lot of work to do at the end, man. A ton of work. What do you, do you give any percentage of Derek Barnett coming back to the Eagles? I would Derek. say low. My opinion, because mm-hmm. we, we don't know yet. It's too early. Yes, three weeks is a little early to know this stuff. We 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 find out a lot, not everything. We find out most of the things, kind of where the team is at at the, at mm-hmm. the combine. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, geez, yeah, next week, uh, with two weeks away. Um, 
they have to have a plan and we'll we'll talk more about defensive end and free agency uh soon but man you gotta uh i would think they would add a d end a veteran because they've done a good job of that as you said earlier right but they got they got to draft with these three first round picks we'll we'll, we'll find out more about who the, one of those could be they're taking a DN early. I mean, they, they don't have a choice here. They they need help here at the end. They do. It is not. It's 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 going to help them out that it's a, gr- a really good pass rusher draft because I think need and best player available are going to coincide for them. Uh, I'm at least at least one time in their first three picks in the first round if that's what they wind up doing. Yeah. Uh, I imagine will happen. So, um, as far as Kerrigan, real quick, Adam, do you think that the two sack game against? Uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks will will give him a little bit of juice headed not for the Eagles but for another team. I I would have thought he might be heading into retirement before that game, but then he <laughs> kind of like you know channeled himself from five years ago and had a pretty good game there. Yeah, the way as I said earlier, I think it's more uh, he did show up. He showed he was healthy. Remember, he did break his thumb mm-hmm. uh, and had the, had the procedure done, and he was really limited uh, for the first quarter of the season coming back from it. Uh, but he's to me he's a fourth end now he's i don't know if he'll make the hall of fame but he's had a very good career no, no yeah. problem. he's been so good right. he was the eagle killer man for years he, he did so well against the eagles and then they got him yeah he killed um, him again yeah. <laughs> what's that yeah, yeah well, he killed him for he yeah, killed him by being on the eagles <laughs> yeah other than the buck game you're right i mean he i think there's might have been more coverage sacks so that's yeah. pretty much it for D-line. as we Right. Think. Okay, so linebackers. Uh, very interesting here. Alex Singleton is a restricted free agent. Jannard Avery is an unrestricted free agent. Let's talk Alex Singleton. I would think you're going to give him the one-year low tender. I would think. I know you're going to well, remake this position, but there's see, no guarantees. Go he, ahead. He, see, they play their linebackers farther back. If you compare 32 teams to each other, yeah, their alignment, they're they're as I understand it, they're farther back than they were under Schwartz. That's why you would see him late for plays and maybe some missed mm-hmm. tackles. He mm-hmm. wasn't the only one, right? Uh, after he got benched and got a, got part, a lot of his job back, he started playing better. That's a, it's a great question. Term it, this is a tough one. I would ordinarily say no because he got benched, but it's like if you look at they've never made any commitment to build this position. I understand by the cap. And Davion Taylor got hurt. The Taylor flashed before he got hurt. My goodness, wh- where is this position going? This don't... That's a great question. Where's it been? Where's yeah. it been and where's it going? Well, Edwards <laughs> is the only certainty because they resigned him. I know they extended him one year. They could cut him if they wanted to. There's not a lot of money. The right. fact matters they like him. The staff likes him. But other than that, there's no certainty at all. Patrick Johnson's there who ha- – had some snaps sometimes. We, it was a little bit surprising when he played a little bit more than we expected, but he's no mm-hmm. certainty. Sean Bradley's just a special teamer. Yeah. Avery, as you said, is up. And Avery, he he played him. You know, they, when they they played a lot of that five man front, and he was he was you know he was playing down low as the fifth defender. I I don't know. I, I thought he did some good things, but he to me he's a thirty four outside linebacker. That's just what he's built like. Right to me so i don't i don't think he really fits I, he did a good job and he did a good job on what they were asking him to do to me he's better off playing elsewhere i'd be very surprised just to get his opinion we're not reporting mm-hmm. anything yet because we don't know enough yet because they're still trying to figure things out as we as we checked into it, these things mm-hmm. but i just think he's a much better fit for a true 34 as a rush outside linebacker back to singleton even if you were to sign a guy draft a guy and trade for a guy like trade for a starter that's three guys, and then T.J. Edwards is four. Like Singleton and Davion Taylor, five, six. Like I still think you're going to wind up having Singleton on your roster. Um, Davion just can't be counted on because he's been he's been hurt for his two year. Uh, well, no, I should say he was hurt. He was he was learning year one, yeah. hurt year two. Um, so he's got a far way to go. Now he, his athleticism helped. He gets oh. downhill faster than Singleton. That's why he was able to make p- better plays in the run game. And why he and Edwards are starting? They, but yeah. good. No, I was just to say they cannot count on Davion Taylor. Uh, we have no. to mention him. Yes, he's on the roster. Between Edwards, the guys on a contract right now are Christian Ellis, who's just on a reserve future contract. Luther Ellis's son, uh, Sean Bradley, only is a special team player. You don't want him playing on defense. He's just a good right. special team player. The only guys we know we're going to play are Patrick Johnson uh, in in a sub package role. Or depending on how they align, or, or, and they're five two because you know they're going to play mostly nickel. They're mm-hmm. not going to play 
they're not a big dime team. They do, they showed a little bit, obviously in the second half, but that's really they're going to be more of a nickel team. They're not they're never going to play three linebackers unless it's in goal line or short yardage. Mm-hmm. So you only really need you need five guys to dress each week. And right now it's only Edward. The only certainties they know are Edwards and Johnson and Davion Taylor, who flash, but you can't count on him because he's so raw mm-hmm. and and uh, underdeveloped. He's just got a long way to go here. But I'll tell you what, I got to give uh, what's it? Nick Rollis is his name. Yeah, linebackers coach. That I don't know how he coached him, but I'll tell you what, you saw you and I saw it in training camp before he got hurt. Mm-hmm. Definitely showed some. He he. He did make a jump, but he still got a ways to go. Yeah, you know, he made the jump in the area of the game that you would expect he'd be able to make that jump in, which is run defense, getting to the hole, you know, figuring out how to use his speed um, to make the plays. His coverage, as I understood, it was still – he still had a, a, a bigger gap to bridge there. I don't know, Adam. I'm starting to think about it, and, and now I'm wondering – you know, I don't know that Alex Singleton gets the tender. Again, not reporting anything, just kind of figuring out the numbers, figuring out that they're going to bring in at least two guys. Yep. Got Taylor, got Edwards. You know, if you need a fifth, Sean Bradley can be a fifth, or you can even draft two guys. And Well, they have Jacoby Stevens, too. Uh, I don't know about Alex Singleton. I, I would not be – now that I kind of go through the names in my head, I would not be a – Hundred, I would not be surprised if they did not tender him. If they yeah, let him Stevens, go, yeah, Stevens is a new factor, and he's got to show that he can he can play at this level. He's learning a new position, so sure. I'm always looking they about drafted him. him. I'm sorry, but they drafted him, so right. But he's only seventh rounder. Did they? Didn't they wind up cutting him? Did yeah, him yeah, back? yeah. They cut him. Um, he's just he's a long ways away. If he's been on the outside looking, and he's got to prove that he belongs. So, mm-hmm. boy, once again, such mm-hmm. uncertainty at linebacker. What else is new? People are like, yeah. Well, like I just, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> once again, we're kind of nitpicking and obsessing over guys and their futures who on like mo on like 20, 30 to 45% of the rest of the league yeah. would be like a special teams linebacker at most, you know, like yeah. not even on the field. So All right, go ahead. I'm just going to say Singleton was benched, you know, as we yeah. said earlier, and I know they, they did it for Davion Taylor. I actually told him that I, from what we understand, they let him know what in what direction they were going, and Taylor got hurt, and he, he got back in. And right, uh, but no, I I don't see him being tenored as we move to corner and safety. Well, there are, uh, corners this Stephen Nelson. He's an unrestricted free agent, and then the safeties obviously Anthony Harris and Rodney McLeod. So let's start with Nelson. I, you know, he, he, it's weird. He was not thrown at very often, so it looked like he had like a pretty good year. But you know, you you talk to guys who watch the tape. And they would say, man, did this guy get lucky that the quarterback didn't throw at him <laughs> because he he was not exactly stellar in, in, in coverage, specifically in man. Uh, and they did play a lot more man over the second half of the year. Yep. Uh, th- I mean, they're going to probably they're going to address this position, no doubt about it. So I don't I don't know if it's going to be sensible for them to bring Steve Nelson back if they're going to wind up playing somebody opposite Darius Slay, who's not. Steven Nelson, because Steven Nelson has a high opinion of himself and he wants to play. So yeah, we, he may not be anxious to re-sign with the Eagles, even if they want to try to bring him back on a one-year deal. Like you saw how long he waited last year. Yeah, that was when we had him on ITB TV, we didn't really get into correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't do did we discuss, I don't think, did we discuss why he was released? Because I know he he didn't want to take a pay cut. Uh, correct. With Correct. Berg, but right. Um, so right now with Nelson up, yeah, I'm. We need to dig a little bit more here. I'm certainly not feeling like he's going to be back for sure. But here's the problem: they have one guy under contract they know has got a def- clearly defined role. Actually, two. Max, who did a good year, who's their slot corner, and Slay mm-hmm. is their top. The only outside corner they know has got a role is Slay. Right. Other than that, McPherson is a total wild card. Um, did some good things when he got pressed into service. Uh, Josiah Scott was acquired in the trade. Who could play inside or outside? They don't know much much about him. Craig James is back on a reserve future contract. Mac McCain is, is back. He was claimed off waivers, and Tate Gallon came over in the um, in the Ertz trade. Carrie Vincent. They have no absolutely no answers right, right out the corner, other than select. So it's a tough predicament, I think, for Nelson because for Nelson, he looks at the Eagles and he knows that he's either going to start on the outside opposite Slay or he's not playing at all because he's not going to slide to nickel, even though he can. He'd be, he'd be a good nickel, but you've got Maddox and Trench there. 
So yeah. he may look at it right now and say, hey, there's nobody better than me opposite Darius Slay, right. so I can resign. But the problem is, is he, I'm sure his agent's smart enough to know that the Eagles have three first round picks. They've got money to spend. They could easily get a starter uh, in either the draft or free agency for more money long term. And then all of a sudden, Nelson goes completely to the bench. So uh, if I'm Steven Nelson, I'm I'm probably not going to agree to anything unless there's security and a lot of money, which the Eagles are not going to give him at this minute. So I, I think that this is going to be, for, at least for the start, I can't see anything getting done before the, the free agency of the draft between these two factions here. Yeah, especially if his, his agent, Josh Arnold, uh, you know, if he – because agents are – he's been around a long time. You might remember T.J. Ward. He was uh, Ward's uh, agent. Yeah. So if, if Nelson's agent figures out, okay, here's here's a landscape of free agency, particularly at the combine next week, mm -hmm. um, he'll have information of of kind of what's out there for him. Right. The Eagles also will know what the what the going price is for Nelson. I won't rule it out, but no. here's the next to move this forward here. Even if and even if he comes back, I don't see anything more than a one year structure. Even if he does a multi year deal, he is twenty nine. He's a young twenty nine though. Right pretty durable guy but the the question is how many corners do you draft we know they're going to draft one i would draft two that's just me i want more i want as many good corners as i could get to play outside right listen if if you know josh arnold and howie sit down at some point and they say well what's the landscape look like and how he says you know oh, one year deal that's what we're looking at then i'm just, i'm not signing it just because i know that that means they're not committed to me and that they're probably going to get a starting corner through the draft, at least, or if not free agency. And then that puts me right on the bench. I don't get any other opportunity to play the slot. So I'd rather just take my services elsewhere because some team will probably be looking for a starting outside corner on a one-year deal that might be willing to, to have more opportunity to play than he would in Philadelphia. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, as far as the safeties, I think you can make a good argument to not bring both back just on performance alone. Not that they were bad, but you really need to get better and younger and more athletic at this position. The problem is, as we've talked about before, if you let both of them go, you really only have Marcus Epps and what, Kavon Wallace? And and Kavon has not deserved, earned the starting role yet. And, you know, Marcus Epps hasn't shown he can be a starter. He's flashed nicely. He can be. He'd probably be a starter, but... You don't. I don't. I don't know if it's too risky to, to have both of these guys walk. Well, I would. I would expect one to walk. That that I definitely you know, one. Yeah, feel strong, yeah. pretty strongly that one, both won't be back. I just that that's just Harris turns thirty one. Uh, Roddy turns thirty two. Um, you know, obviously, what what a signing he was coming over from the Rams uh, many years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, uh, when you look at his situation, uh. Rodney is, you know, he's had a couple significant injuries in his career. Mm -hmm. uh, he's winding down a, a marvelous career. Um, does turn 32 in June. They've got to get younger. Wallace has not done anything in his first years other than play special teams. He's just not been what they were hoping. He's more of a box player. Mm -hmm. uh, not a good coverage guy. Chachere is there as more of a special teamer. Uh, Maiden and Jacoby Stevens. So Stevens is actually playing linebacker, but... Uh, could play safety if they need him to. So it's a, it's another empty position. They, to me, you add two. One absolutely at a Definitely. minimum has to be the draft. The Definitely. other one, sign one. So why don't you? And they've had a good history, obviously with Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod, and some others over the years. They've done very well. It would not surprise me at all if they sign a, a, a younger, veteran free agent. I would agree with you. So if you're going to bring back one of these two, which one are you bring back? It's a great question. They probably been, Anthony, right? Well, a little bit younger. He's only basically not. Uh, he turns thirty-one in October, so you're you're looking at you know more or less a year older uh, is yeah. Rodney. Um, Harris knows the defense. Just so does Epps, by the way. So I, I would I would think that Epps. I think you and I agree on this. He'll he'll be a starter almost certainly. Um, I I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. Because he's really done a good job. Boy, he he did a good job. Whenever I asked to play extend time minutes, he did a good job. He's been a great story. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They might draft a guy maybe in the okay. second or third round who you would pair with a guy that you sign, whether it's Anthony Harris or another free agent. So well, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure I th Marcus is going to start, but I, I see what you're saying. Well, he he it's, think of it this way: Harris and McLeod are up. We know one's mm -hmm. not coming back. It's possible both don't come back. 
True. Both don't come back. No one else besides Epps could start. There's Wallace is not. I mean, we, I've seen right. him. Not, he's not a starter. He's just right. he's just not a good enough athlete. And just um, I know some people we talked to were pretty intrigued with him coming into that draft two years mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. But he'll get another chance to compete and dress every week. But he's going to have to have a great offseason to play into their plans in terms of rotation and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm still expecting them to to add two safeties, whether it's two in free agency or two in the draft, one and one. We'll see. They'll figure that out. But they, they've got to reshape and get younger at safety. That's boy, this secondary needs a lot of work. Yeah, it does. The whole defense needs a lot of work. But yeah, especially yes. the secondary. It does. It's just, let me ask you this. Is this yeah. the most amount of questions you've had w- with this defense in years? For me, I sure have. Sure is. Uh, I would say yes, because we really haven't talked. We, we've had the questions about corner, safety, and linebacker before. But when you throw in the fact, what we usually don't have to worry about or or talk about much is the lack of pass rushers, uh, like proven standout young athletes. I mean, they really need that. So they really kind of need an overhaul here on defense. And let's not pretend that. Darius Slay is young either. So, I mean, it's not, they need one corner to start opposite of him, but for their future, they need at least two. Um, yep. Yeah, they need two. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of work that has to be done. A lot. Major to me. Major. Yeah. And, and plus, if they entertain trading Cox, you have one starter in Hargrave, and mm-hmm. then Milt Williams is a great – I know a lot of people want to will he start. I, talking to the Eagles about him, what we were told is – they love him as a rotational player. They're not ruling out him starting, but you know you you, you can't press it. They want to just see him right. continue to mature. They love the work ethic and the energy. He's been obviously been a great story. He played way more than I expected. He's, he was better than I expected. Um, I got to give Roseman the GM credit for sticking by his guns and uh, not not defying the great Tom Donahoe on that one, which was on the video. <laughs> uh that that this past draft is you know on paper is looking good not great but looking good so far it is it is and they're going to need another good one to answer all those questions that we just came up with all right next podcast we're also going to talk for continue free agency but maybe talk about what we'll get into is holes the areas uh i'm sorry areas and holes the eagles need to address and the right type of free agents out there that could really help them we'll do all that next podcast so that'll do it for this edition of inside the birds the leading podcast in what did i say leading podcast in eagles intel i just had a brain fart there leading podcast for eagles intel uh it says it on our logo right just in case i ever have a brain lapse again you can just check <laughs> number one in eagles intel <laughs> Uh, make sure you check out our friend uh, Hunter Brody, our producer's work. He's on YouTube Sports. Uh, his uh, YouTube channel is called Sports Talk with called Broads. Sports Talk with Broads. And his website is called BroadsMedia.com. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.